Simon program. So many people, when we talk about the words, and we say the words master penman, a lot of images come to mind. <coughs> images that are legendary. To some of us that are very personal, and to others may seem to be so distant that we're talking about you know, the founding fathers of the American Revolution. It just seems that there's so much in the past. We speak about people like Zayner and Bloser, Blanchard, and Francis Courtney, Louis Madras. These images of these, these God-inspired men who created penmanship that almost seems past you know, the, the ability of a human hand to create uh, come to mind. When we go up to the hospitality suite and we see these unbelievable examples and specimens of penmanship from all of these masters from the past. We look at those and we wonder, you know, what was it like to live back then? How would it feel to actually study under one of these masters, of course, while they were living, and to hear their, their counsel and their advice, to watch their hands move, to actually see that? I was lucky enough to be able to do that with my teacher, Paul O'Hara. Vivian Mungle was able to do that with Stephen Ziller. Stephen is probably in his 90s now. He turns 90 on August 9th. My teacher died in 1990 when he was 101. It goes on and on. You know, all of us had, had uh, certain opportunities to study with some of these people. And we know what it was like to be able to study an apprentice under the eyes of a master. It's hard to describe, it's hard to explain, it's even harder to convey the feeling that we receive when we actually were in that circumstance. Well, several years ago, we got to thinking about that. There were several of us who um, you know, had that experience and started to think about the fact that when we revere these masters, we talk about them in the past tense because almost all of them now have long since passed away. And if we continue to do that, nobody anymore would ever get to study from a master. In a sense, there would be no more, quote, master penman. So we thought about that. And we came up with an idea that seemed to be a good idea, and I think it is. A master penman is a title <coughs> that was an honorary title that the colleagues, the people who were considered master penmen because of their work, because of the skill, the quality of their work, it was revered in the sense of being as good as it could get. And people who were normally considered master penmen would welcome new people into their group of, if you want to say master penmen, um, sort of group of master penmen, they would welcome them in when they recognized their work as being equal and on par to match the work of these other established masters. Folks back then who went to penmanship schools and academies like the Fang Zanarian, the Gem City Business Institute, and many of the others, when they graduated, they were given the words for their diploma, and they had to create their own certificate. And based on their skill at executing their own certificate, they were awarded a certain colored seal, and the highest color was gold. And if you received a gold seal diploma from one of these institutions, you were sort of earmarked as, that person's going to be a master pen. And virtually all of them became that. Bill Lilly, a member of this organization, was one of, in one of the last year college, or schools of the Zanarian Art College in 1952, when he received a gold seal diploma due to his work in engrosser script. So obviously, you know, he was really one of those people. His teacher was Earl Lovefer. Earl Lovefer was considered certainly one of the finest of those penmen. Earl Lovefer was a, a classmate of my teacher back in 1909 and 1910 at the Zanarian. And Bill was an instrumental figure in helping us in starting the master penman program and determining who would be a master. We had different uh, qualifications. 
In terms of the general role of penmanship in the field of artistic writing, if you want to call it that, there were five sort of categories. Artistic writing, or we can call it ornamental penmanship, business writing, engrossing, offhand flourishing, and text lettering. These are the, the five major fields of this profession that we're in. And to be a master, it was generally decided that a person had to show you know, really high skill ability. I mean, as good as the master. So you could put the master's work on one hand, and you could put the candidate's work on the other, and you pretty much couldn't tell the difference because they were just as good. So a master, to be a master, after you, you know, showed your work, the master who were reviewing it would be able to see that in at least two of those five fields. Now, a person could be skillful in a number of them, but their highest degree of skill had to show in at least two. People who want to be master penmen can be sort of, I don't know if groomed is the right word, but they can study under people who are master penmen. One of the reasons, one of the main reasons why we have a master penman program is to perpetuate this, to cultivate the legacy artistic penmanship, which includes all five fields, and to bring people up to the level that the master penman exhibited in their work by sharing with them, by grooming with them, by doing what Steve Ziller did for Vivian, or Paul O'Hare did for me, and what the other master penman did for the teachers, or the other master penman in the group. The first year that we had the master penman ceremony, there were seven of us that were inducted. Of the seven people who were inducted, Three were elderly gentlemen, well into their 80s and 90s, who were at a, certainly at a master's degree during their heyday, which was in the 40s and 50s. I had the distinct honor of being inducted that year with my own teacher, who at that time was 87 years old, David Fairbanks, who taught me in grossing. Also inducted that year were Coates Brown, the gentleman that you, you know, received at example of this engrossing at the dinner table, and Joel Kowalski. I'm sad to say that Joel Kowalski passed away about three weeks ago. He was 90. He was a graduate of the Zanarian Art College and did beautiful work for a number of years uh, back in the, the early 50s. Uh, the other four people that were inducted that year were what we would call contemporaries, people still in harness. Rosemary Buczek, Rick Muffler, John DeCollins, right? <laughs> and myself. I certainly felt special because of the four contemporaries. I was the only one who was right handed. <laughs> I, felt, I, I felt sorry for me. Let me sneak in. Last year we had two very fine inductees, people that we're very, very proud of. And um, certainly by their work, it speaks for itself. Vivian Mungle of the Ziller Studio. Vivian